I guess I already have a microphone, don't I? Um, so as Marco said, I'm Michael Ducey. Uh, I'm known as the goat father. Uh, and I work for Chef. I'm not a chef. Uh, if you want to uh, debate anything that I say or other things, um, you can reach me on Twitter there or also check out goatcan.com as well, which has a podcast associated with it called, of course, The Goat Farm. So. What's all this goat talk about? So um, there's a problem in calculus. Some of you might have done it when you were in uh, university or uni, as they say here, right? Uh, so I'm picking up on the lingo slowly. So there's this calculus problem. A goat is tied to a silo of radius x um, with a rope length of y. What is the grazing area of the goat? And so the first question when I talk about goats and DevOps and other things like that, that I usually get from people, and you probably have this question in your head right now, is, and the answer is, well, possibly. Uh, if you talk to my coworkers who are in the back, uh, they might confirm or deny that, or uh, for HR reasons may not tell you the answer to that question. So let's talk about silos. Uh, so silos are everywhere. Um, a big theme of DevOps is tearing down the silos, right? And people, when you start to talk about silos and organizational silos, not actual real grain silos, people seem to get really, really like, empowered and angry and like, ready to fight you about the silos in their organizations. And it's a big, big topic. And they're almost like this guy, right? Uh, you know, standing in front of the wall saying, Mr. Manager, tear down those silos, right? But the interesting thing about silos are is silos are essentially, essentially just a reflection of organizational structure. They've just been there as the organization has grown and evolved and every six to eight months, uh, our management teams decide to do a reorg. And that's their way of trying to bust up the silos and bust up the little palaces that have been built in, built in the organization. And so what ends up happening in the reorg, what ends up happening is, is that the managers are, of course, the ones that actually get to choose what the new organizational structure looks like. And managers, and no offense to the managers in the room, it's just nature of how things work, okay? But what happens is, is the managers are going to create the organization that are most advantageous for themselves to keep their little fiefdoms in place, right? I see some people nodding their heads. I see some people looking very angry at me right now. It's okay. Um, the other interesting thing is that um, silos are also just a reflection of our IT manufacturing process. So it's kind of a way that we kind of self-organize in IT in that the database people like to talk to the database people because they know how to talk SQL and other database-y things. Obviously, I'm not a database administrator. Or I would have more description of those database-y database things. Uh, but the ops guys hang out with the ops guys, and the devs hang out with the devs, and all of those things, right? I mean, we kind of self-organize that way because we have people who have similar interests than us. And also, if you look at something like this, so this is what's called a value stream map. And in this value stream map, you have all of the different, what are called value centers. And you can see that work comes in on the, uh, what is that, the left side? So work comes in on the left side, and it goes into these little work centers. And you know, each work center, so it sits there for five days before anybody picks it up in the milling department, and they spend two minutes providing value. And then it sits there for 10 days, and then the next team picks it up, and they provide four minutes of value. And it just goes on and on and on. Does this look familiar to anyone? And so if you think of it, you know, the way that we're organized is, is much like this, right? The OS people, you know, they spend two minutes actually provisioning the machine for us. Of course, it takes us five days to actually get them to do that work, to pick up the ticket. And then it sets there for 10 days before the app team gets it and so on and so forth, right? And usually what ends up happening is that it's wrong at some point. And so there's a lot of waste going back and forth, right? Because the DB team gets it and it's like, they use the wrong image again because the intern is now launching the, uh, or creating the instances for me, right? 
And so they got to go all the way back here and start all over, and then you get put at the end of the queue, right? So in DevOps, we're really trying to break down these silos and increase the flow of work through the system, right? The product that we're trying to get all the way through to the important person, which is our customer, right? So let's pivot for a second and let's talk about goats. So uh, goats are, are somewhat kind of all the rage these days. They're kind of replacing kittens on the internet of, of funny memes and things like that. Uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> so uh, goats are interesting animals. So if you actually do a little bit of studying of goats, you'll find out that one, they're really naturally curious creatures. So if you put them into a pen, you know, this will probably be the result. They're trying to get out. They're trying to explore their boundaries. And within that boundary that you give a goat, he's going to explore, or she, will explore everything inside of that boundary. And the way that they do that is through putting things into their mouth. So they don't have opposing thumbs. Uh, so they have to put things into their mouth to discover their environment. This actually leads to the myth that goats will eat anything. And it's not necessarily that goats will eat anything. Goats will put anything in their mouth because they're feeling their world and they want to learn. The other thing is, is that goats are really, really multi-purpose. So you can use them for just about anything. So that's actually my grandfather. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> so you can use them to haul your kids around the farm. Uh, you can also use them to haul your roosters around as well. I don't know what, I haven't been able to figure out what's up with this, because I see this a lot on the internet where there's just a rooster riding on a goat, and it's like, why not, right? Um, you could, you know, apologies to the vegetarians in the room, but you could make a stew out of a goat if you wanted to. Uh, maybe a little bit more appropriately, because now at least you still have your goat, you can milk your goat and make some nice lovely cheese or drink the milk raw or anything like that. Uh, they also make very fashionable clothing as well. Um, and another interesting thing is, I actually saw this, I was driving through the Belgian countryside this weekend, so uh, it's my birthday today. I thought you guys were going to start singing for me, come on. No, that's all right. <laughs> so, um, so some friends of mine, uh, I was, went over to Amsterdam and we went down to uh, West Verlederland, if anyone knows what that is, the Belgian brewery that makes one of the best beers in the world. And as we were driving along the countryside, there were some goats alongside of the highway on a hill. And what were the goats doing? The goats were eating. And this is actually not a picture of a goat from Amsterdam, by the way. Uh, and they were using the goats as a natural lawnmower. And so what's interesting is, is you can actually go to rentagoat.com and you can rent a goat. And now you can also go to Amazon and actually rent goats as well. You can also rent goat herders as well, which is interesting. You'd think you would herd your own goats. Um, but also what's interesting is when the goat is out there grazing and stuff, the goat manure and things like that can be used as fertilizer. So a lot of times in developing countries, a goat will be given to a family and it helps raise them out of poverty because all of the different things that a goat can actually provide to that family. And if you think about a goat, a goat is a very multi-purpose animal. And when you start to think about our roles in IT organizations, you can think of something like a full stack developer. Now, everybody's heard this idea of the full stack developer. Some people get really angry about it. Again, I don't understand why. Um, or even full stack operations people as well. So uh, when I was doing operations, I was actually very heavily focused into what the dev teams were doing because I needed to understand how the Java application worked because mainly because it was uh, you know, core dumping all the time. But um, we had to figure out why it was always running out of memory and all of these other various fun things. And so that required me to get very close with the developers and learn what their code was actually doing. And that's what you have is, is, is in this world of DevOps. You need these individuals who will spread themselves out and go and learn and explore their environment. And they're naturally curious. And they're very, so Linux recruit, you're listening to this, right? These are the type of people you want to be hiring, right? And also, if you look at it, this isn't just limited to the world of developers and operations, but it's also the business people, and it's also the security people, and it's also the database people, and it's all the people in our organization that need to be curious about all of those things that go into the process to reduce results for a customer, right? Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much memory my application is using or what the CPU load is or anything like that. 
as long as I'm delivering something to the customer and they're getting it within the time that they think they should be getting it, then we're being successful. So let's talk about goats and silos. Um, so by the way, if you uh, there's this game called Goat Simulator where you can actually be this goat and like go and run around and headbutt things. And then you can also be uh, you, there's one that's kind of more like Walking Dead style, where it's Goat Simulator with zombies. And then it's also a MMO as well, so you can play with other people. So let's go back to the calculus problem. So this is what it kind of looks like if you have to solve this problem. Uh, I'm not actually going to throw any uh, in, uh, integrals or, or whatever they're called. I forget all my calculus work. I swear I actually have a degree in CS, but I forget all of my calculus. So um, what is it? An integral. Thank you. Um, so this is what the, it actually looks like. And so you would think at first that this is a really easy problem to solve. It's not necessarily because what happens is, is the tether starts wrapping around the silo. But if we think about if we have a goat tethered to an organizational silo, so we have people in our organization that are willing to go out and spread themselves out into other parts of the organization, what you end up happening is something like this. And so with multiple goats, we have goats running amongst other goats, right? And what tends to happen when animals tend to, you know, walk around other animals? Well, one answer is, is they could all get a virus or die and die. Uh, the other answer is, is you breed more goats, right? So as the curious individuals are allowed to go out from their silos, and so this is the part for the people who have Manage people is as your people are allowed to go out and spread themselves out and learn more about uh, how their organizations actually run and learn from other groups. They, you, you get this kind of idea where all these different teams are now beginning to talk and the ops team can talk to the security team and be like, hey, I was thinking we're doing this great continuous integration pipeline where we're actually doing this thing of infrastructure as code and you can begin to write tests that actually verify that all the security stuff are already going into the builds before we actually do the builds and release them, right? Because you can actually put checks in your CI pipeline or CD pipeline. They're actually verifying all of the security stuff is done, right? Before it's actually deployed. And the security guy's like, wow, that's awesome, right? So they don't necessarily know about it, but as they begin to learn those things, they can actually get involved in the process and make the entire organization better. So, um, when we look at silos, it's not necessarily important that we look at the silos in our organization, but it's more important that we look at the entire organization and how those silos work together, right? Does anyone know what this is called? No, wrong. These are silos. Uh, this is called a grain elevator. Uh, and so the important thing about the grain elevator is, is that the grain elevator has things at the top, right, that actually take the grain, there, behind this there's actually a train line, right, and so I live in the Midwest of the United States, and in the Midwest of the United States when you go driving through the countryside, you see these over and over and over again, and you see them in little small towns, and usually right next to them is a train line, and what happens is, is all the farmers bring in their grain, probably in their truck, that's not a truck, but there's a farmer's lineup, they bring all their grain in, it goes into something like this called the grain elevator, and it sets there and waits, then, then it gets on a train, and then it's farmed off to something like ConAgra or uh, Cargill or another manufacturing company that actually does something useful with it, or Tate and Lyle. And what's important in this entire thing is the grain elevator, because the grain elevator is actually what's moving the grain between the silos. So all of the anger that's facing the silos is probably misdirected and instead it should be turned into something more positive to say, how do we fix our grain elevators, right? And how do we fix moving that work between the different organizational silos to actually get work out quicker to our end customers, right? So lastly, I'll leave you with this. So be the GOAT, right? So be that person in your organization that's curious, that's going out, that's wanting to work with other teams. When other people come up and ask questions of you, you're more than willing to help them out and answer, answer those questions. Don't be the one who's angry with the headphones on and is like, oh God, you interrupted me again. Don't you know the headphone rule? 
Yeah, everybody laughs at that, but it's totally true, right? And so be that person that's curious in your organization and that's actually going out and making change for the better. So uh, one last plug. So thank you uh, for having me. You can find Chef at London Technology Week if you snap that URL, uh, or just go to London Technology Week and search for Chef. Uh, we have a couple different things that we're doing. One is a Chef and AWS workshop, uh, and then also our uh, monthly Chef meetup as well. And if you need to get in touch with me, here's how you can get in touch with me again. Thank you very much.